All right, let's now shift our attention to what is unfolding in Ethiopia, Ethiopia, where the country seems to be heading towards a prolonged civil war that could potentially destabilize the wider Horn of Africa region. And this never-ending civil war has all the glaring signs of a possible genocide. At least two million people so far, according to reports, have been displaced. And there is a famine that is sweeping through this region. And this also has sparked a wave of atrocities. The escalating, escalating hostilities in Tigray are all set to now tear Ethiopia apart. So let's get you the latest in terms of what is happening where two strategic regions of Ethiopia, Amhara and Afar, have been captured by the Tigray fighters. And now they are reportedly advancing further south towards Addis Ababa, which is the capital city of Ethiopia. A nationwide state of emergency has been declared in the country and citizens of Addis Ababa have been urged to defend their homes. The Prime Minister insists that he is very determined. He's promised to fight and I quote what he's saying here, bury the enemy with our blood is how he has described it. This pit, which is dug very deep, will be where the enemy will be buried, not where Ethiopia disintegrates. We will bury this enemy with our blood and bones and make the glory of Ethiopia high up again. The six-month state of emergency has been imposed to establish roadblocks, to impose curfews and also to disrupt transport services within this Frame, time frame of time, anyone who suspected of having links with the Tigrayan forces could also be detained without a court notice. And any citizen who has reached the age of military service could also be called in to fight. Violation of emergency would also invite three up to ten years in prison. The Tigrayan forces are heading towards the capital of Ethiopia and the residents are preparing to defend their homes, neighborhoods and the country. Now in a show of unity and courage. ስለዚህ ወጣቶች በሚያደርጉት ሙያ ነው መከላከል የሚፈልገው ኦሬዲ እስከ ግንባር መዝመታን መዝመት ያለብን የሚል ሐሳብ አለ መንግስቱ ህዝብ ተረባርብ አካባቢውን በመጠበቅ ሰፈሩን በመጠበቅ ቤት ልጅ ያከራይ ሌላም ሌላም ነገር ሲያደርግ ሰዎችን ይወቃቸው መጀመሪያ እና ማን እንደሆነ ችግሩ ያለው በዚህ መልኩ ነው but the Tigray People's Liberation Front has accused the Ethiopian Prime Minister of having unleashed a reign of terror with a vengeance. The Tigray People's Liberation Front, or the TPLF, has been fighting Abiy Ahmed's government forces for over a year. And they intend to topple the government in Ethiopia. Now, before Abiy Ahmed took charge in Ethiopia, the TPLF had used to govern Ethiopia with an iron grip and it did so for decades. It was hailed as a period of stability and economic growth at the cost of basic civil and political rights. The party's authoritarian rule collapsed after an uprising and then came Abiy Ahmed, a ruling class to quell tensions and also to bring change. He stormed to power in 2018 and sparked new fears that the country's federal system is under threat. The system that had guaranteed autonomy to Tigray province was also under threat and this led to the leaders in Tigray to withdraw to their heartland and continue with their governance in the region. Now, after a series of tit-for-tat escalations between the federal and the regional government, Abiy Ahmed ordered for a military assault against the Tigrayan forces and called the offensive a huge success after just three weeks. Now, the United Nations has a big question in front of it. Which side should the United Nations support? Now, the United Nations insists that it will not support either sides. Both sides have committed war crimes and crimes against humanity. Thousands of people have died in the months-long fighting. And there are also mounting reports of raised refugee camps, lootings, sexual violence, massacres and extrajudicial killings. And thousands have had to flee to Sudan. The United Nations has described it as the worst exodus of refugees from Ethiopia that's been witnessed in over two decades. It's also described it as a completely disastrous conflict that's given rise to ethnic cleansing in certain parts. After evidence of atrocities that have emerged since last year, the Human Rights Commission has launched a joint investigation into the war crimes that are being committed in the country. And this is what they've found.
The joint investigation team has reasonable grounds to believe that a number of these uh, violations may amount to crimes against humanity and war crimes, which require further investigation to ensure accountability. And we also earlier spoke with our correspondent Kuleta Von Johi, who joined us from Addis Ababa, and this is what she had to say about the crisis that looms over Ethiopia. Well, what we have for now is just the threats that uh, the TPLF made uh, days back and uh, saying that they will advance into the capital city. So it is still a threat. Uh, the government saying that it will, uh, it will make sure that that does not happen. And probably that's where we're seeing the state of emergency being, uh, being imposed, you know. So um, if you look at the state of emergency, the declarations, if it will pass, be passed or approved by the, government, by the parliament probably uh, on Thursday, then it will ensure that there is a boosting of security within the city and also beyond. And we are seeing at least within the city already measures being taken by administration. People are being told, I mean, the city has just announced now uh, administration has announced now that they will not be giving new IDs to new city residents as a way of ensuring their security. People are being told, you need to know your neighbor. If you're a landlord, you need to know who you're renting your houses to, you know. So it is, it is uh, people being encouraged now within the city to ensure that they, they are more vigilant as the government takes up the whole, uh, the bigger side of security in terms of uh, uh, boosting uh, security agencies and operations. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.